What's up guys, it's Michael Young from Resound305 and today I've got the review of the much anticipated iPad 3 or as Apple likes to call it, the new iPad. I got this on March 16 and I've been using it extensively all the way until today. So, as you guys can see, let's start off by the industrial design of the iPad. Let me go ahead and remove the smart cover for just a minute. So this looks in many ways similar to the iPad 2, but when you look closely, the iPad 3 actually tapers down in a more exaggerated, or it is more obvious by the way it tapers down, it's just more drastic in a few ways. The back of the iPad is still the exact same deal you'll get on the iPad 2, so there's not much different. I still love the industrial design, I don't think this design will be outdated in years just because it looks so good and none of the competitors have actually been able to match the iPad's industrial design. Samsung tried, HTC tried with the Jetstream and all of them basically fails. Now let's go ahead and talk about the camera which is on the back here. Apple is calling this 5 megapixel camera the EyeSight camera which is quite a goofy name since Apple abandoned that EyeSight nameology. The EyeSight name is usually only restricted to the Mac line so it's quite interesting how Apple is trying to blend both the iPad and the Mac together and in some way try to combine the two of them together. This is granted a little bit um, thicker than the iPad 2. However, I don't think you'll feel the difference in day-to-day -day use. One thing that you'll notice the difference in, however, is the weight. This weighs, alright, on paper it doesn't sound sound that much it weighs about 1.1 pound more than the iPad 2 however just by using it on the bed reading documents replying to emails and stuff the weight becomes quite a bit substantial I mean you can feel the weight however if you're just picking this up for like five minutes just to play games and stuff you won't feel the weight difference but if you're gonna use this for substantial work or a substantial amount of time, you'll feel the weight difference, just like I have. Now on the very top, we have a 720p front-facing camera. Unfortunately, this shoots in only 640 times 480 resolution. So, although the iPad has a 1080p, much more than a 1080p HD display. The camera, the front camera cannot take advantage of that. Which also brings me to another question because I don't think anyone will go around taking pictures with the back because you look really goofy just doing this. But the camera that I think most people will use the iPad for is the front facing camera. You can do FaceTime on it, you can do Skype on it, you can just do a ton of other stuff. And I was wondering why didn't they improve the front camera instead of the back camera? I don't think you'll go around the streets looking at people taking pictures with the 5 megapixel, however good it may be in the back. However, you will, people actually use the front facing camera to do video chatting and all the other stuff so that is I think one of the flaws with the iPad and probably they're gonna improve it in next generation of the iPad alright so here we have got the same deal for in terms of design we have got the home button we have got the mute or lock switch we have got the volume up down the on off switch and nothing just a clean left hand side now let's go ahead and talk about the star feature of the iPad 3 which is obviously the retina display the display is supposedly four times sharper than the iPad 2 however this is not what Apple originally called retina by retina Apple actually said when they released the iPhone 4 they said that retina is only when the pixel density is at 326 pixel per inch however this iPad although the resolution may be mind-boggling this iPad only achieved a 264 
If my memory serves me right, pixel per inch. And Apple's argument was that, no, screw you guys, we are still calling it the Retina because you're usually gonna hold the iPad further away than you would with the iPhone. So that's great, but I've been using this um, iPad very, very extensively just to browse email and you can see the difference. The moment you pick the iPad up, it's not like you have to play around for 10 minutes before you can see the difference in the retina and between the normal screen. You will immediately notice the difference just because it's so prominent. Let's go ahead and open Safari. And I'm just going to show you a text from, what is this, PC World, PC Mac. Just wait for it to load for a second. And another question that I've been getting a lot recently is that if it is worth it or necessary to buy the one with 4G LTE. And here's the answer. For me, I don't think so just because my country hasn't supported 4G or LTE, at least for the main consumer market. And number two is that if you're living in the States or where somewhere in the world that supports 4G or N or LTE, you should go get the one with the LTE and 4G just because it will have a much much higher resale value and those the ones that have 4G and LTE depreciate much um, slower than the one with Wi-Fi like the one I got right here unfortunately this was the only model and variation they had in my Apple store when I walked in so I'll just pick this up. I'll probably sell it after the review and pick up the LTE version. I don't know about that. But as you guys can see, there's no pixelation at all. This is just a web page from PCMac.com. There's no pixelation of any sort. No matter how much you zoom in or you zoom out. So that is great if you browse the web a lot if you reply if you use this as a media consumption device although now Apple is now trying to push the iPad towards a content creation device but I think most people will still use this for content consumption and it's great I mean sometimes it gets a little distracting just be and fatiguing because the display is just so saturated so yeah there's that it's beautiful the display let me go ahead and show you like the apps and sometimes it also gets really annoying because for example some apps haven't been updated to the retina icon or their text haven't been updated to retina display specification so like for example rainbow six here out of focus if you compare this icon to the temple run icon, you can immediately see a huge difference. This one hasn't been upgraded to the retina display compatible icon and temple run obviously looks great on the display. Moving back, let me show you text that hasn't been really updated for retina and let's go ahead and open Engadget's distro which is basically the same so what they report just that in a slower fashion so as you guys can see here this are the text that haven't been updated to the retina it looks very very obviously ugly and it starts to get annoying because if the developer don't upgrade the cam if the developer don't optimize their software for the retina it gets really distracting I can barely read off without thinking why the hell such a big organization like Engadget did not did not actually update their magazine so now let's go ahead and talk about the camera I think the camera is one of the best features of this I iPad although they're supposedly supposed to use the same sensor as they did in the iPhone 4. But however, I found this camera on the back here to be much clearer. I don't know if it's because of the screen, this screen real estate or and or the software included, but this camera seems to blow away the iPhone 4's camera. However, the iPhone 4S camera is still much better than this one. 
So there we have got that. Still, we don't have flash for the camera, so that's a downside. Now let's go ahead and talk about the graphics. Alright, right now I'm just gonna play a quick short game of Temple Run. This is not a really processor intensive game and then I'll play another game of Absol 6 which is which requires a ton of processor processing power. So Apple reportedly upgraded their graphics so that it's four times better than that of the one included in the iPad 2. They even say that this, the graphics in the iPad 3 smokes the Nvidia Turga 3 graphics. Let's go ahead and test that in real life. Let's go ahead and hit play. Let's go. There. Woo! Oh yeah. Alright. So there we have got that. I'm bad, alright? And now let's go ahead and play Obsolt 6. This game requires much more processing power, so let's go ahead and see how that fares. There you can just see how beautiful the graphics are if the developer actually cares to, you know, update their graphics. Let's go ahead and hit continue. Free rate. Alright, let's go ahead and normal. You can just just see how fluid and fast the transitions are. So there you have got that. It's loading. So as you guys can see, there's no lag at all. Although it holds true to this, to the one on the iPad 2. However, do remember that the processor within this, in this iPad, have to drive two things. Number one, the screen itself, the screen. All right. So here's the deal about the screens. The more pixel there is on the screen, the higher the more processing power it needs. It's just how it works. So a 800 times 480 screen needs much less processing power than one of like let's say 960 times 640. Because those um, the graphics chip need to drive those pixels especially when they move around and stuff. So remember although it looks the games looks as fluid as it might be on the iPad 1 or the iPad 2. The processor is actually working twice as hard because it has to drive this um, Retina display and it also has to drive the game which demands a lot of power too. Now there we have got that. Let's go ahead and talk about the speakers. The speakers I feel on the iPad is um, it's alright you know you will be able to use that speaker on a day-to-day -day basis however it's not something you will want to listen your music off just because there's only one there's only one grill on the side and you don't really get that surround sound that you'll get if you have two another thing that I'll have to criticize Apple about is the placement of the speakers itself so you guys can see it's placed on the very bottom and this is where usually most people would actually hold their iPad They'll either hold it like this or like this alright so it actually covers or blocks some of the music and another point that Joshua Topolsky highlighted from The Verge is that the placement of the headphone jack I would have much preferred the headphone jack to be on the bottom or on here just because it is just a better placement it's more logical when you're watching movie or consum consuming media another thing I want to talk about the iPad is that this iPad is actually part of Apple's plan to use to replace textbooks with the iPad so Apple 
basically told the government in the United States with the iBook to let's get rid of those paper. They're old stuff. They're traditional. Let's go with something more advanced and something more be better geared for the future. And so I believe that this iPad with the retina screen, with that graphic, with the same battery life is part, just all part of that little movement. Another thing I want to talk about is the battery life. The battery life is impressively good for a screen this huge with this many pixels. I typically, I typically can get 3 days out of this without turning off, obviously I'm not using this 24 hours a day, but I'm using this for Twitter in the morning, for email, for web browsing, for playing words with friends, for Facebooking, and all of this you can get through 3 days without even turning off the display. And from what battery tests have shown, you can get about nine and a half hours playing video continuously f on the iPad 2. It's impressive, but one thing that Apple did was that they basically covered the entire iPad surface, I mean inside the internal components, with battery. The one inside the iPad 2 has a 24.5 watts per hour battery. This one here have 42. So that is almost double the amount of battery in here just to drive the screen alone so as you guys can see this is really really power hungry and now let's go to one of the things that bug me the most about the iPad 3 as much as I love this as much as I want to play with it sometimes I have to put it down just because the iPad hits up so quickly and it gets just because the iPad hits up like crazy I mean it's not like burning hot or you get scalded or anything but it gets almost impossibly warm and even though I'm using the smart cover to as like a little barrier between my hand and the iPad it gets really warm and sometimes you just have to put it down and this is just the Wi-Fi version I can not imagine what the heat will be like in the 4G LTE version there is one of the biggest downside I experienced. Anyway, other than that, I and I love this iPad. I'll probably be selling this 16 GB Wi-Fi off to get the 32 GB 4G LTE, which is the one I wanted. So that has been my final review of the iPad 3. Apple did a fantastic job with this, and I mean by fantastic job is that even if they kept the same iPad 2 internals and just upgraded the screen this would have been still a major improvement over any other tablet that has came to the market in the past years so this is my final review if you do enjoy my content please consider subscribing I'm Michael Leon from Reason 305 and I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye